Welcome to ePlan Spotlight. Today our topic is service and maintenance. My name is Thomas Michels and I'm here with my dear colleague Anders Danas. Hi Anders. Hi Thomas, how are you? Okay, nice to have you in the studio. Thank you, pleasure to be here. So when we have a look at this topic, service maintenance, when the machines are running, when there's production, um, this is often the case when it comes really to um, yeah, some, some situations where you need access to um, documentation for the plant, maybe to fix some issues in the plant when there's a breakdown or when there's some maintenance task. But then it's often the topic that there is no documentation available or missing documentation, maybe uh, outdated and whatever. And uh, explicitly there's also often a gap between the service team and the engineering team. So there's maybe no way to give feedback and maybe um, to, yeah, to, to document and, and to update changes uh, that are made in the plant and give them back to engineering so that they can just update the documentation and really keep it as built and as maintained. Do you come across with these situations or with these topics, Anders, in your daily business? Yeah, unfortunately, yes, Thomas. Yeah, so I would say very commonly or from time to time depends, of course, but you normally see this from the perspective of poor standardization on the operator side or, or and poor uh, also documentation, I would say as well. And if you think and start from the standardization perspective, you see that there are, for example, various different machinery that using different type of systems in place and different technology that is utilized in the different fields uh, and different machines or plants. And of course, this has a big impact for especially the maintenance. So as a field engineer, uh, to manage different type of system require a lot of skills and a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, years in the company to understand what is the, utilized in the different environment, so to speak. And of course, this takes also a lot of time to train these new field engineers as well uh, as coming in new into the company. So this is uh, about the fact that it's not really standardized. They bought different type of machinery with different technology and, and have a lot of different legacy, basically. And of course, this takes much, much more time to, to repair once there is pro uh, problems in the plant. And of course, this includes uh, more cost in the end of the day and, and of course require longer downtimes for the for the manufacturing and, and this is one of the key element uh, that has an impact when we talk about standardization. On the other side when we talk about poor documentation as you are coming in front of the machine there is something wrong now you need to figure out how do you find the, the right documentation and, and as you can see on the picture here unfortunately this is quite common that you have poor documentation, uh, maybe in this kind of paper copies uh, that is very old, maybe not up to date. And of course, this has a huge impact in the sense of how you can manage this uh, as a field engineer. So this is, of course, um, based on legacy, old technologies, and of course, no chance to really apply what is out there in sense of new technology from, from uh, the market. And, and this has a huge impact, I would say, Thomas. Yeah. And I think the latest when it comes to this downtime and to costs and to um, yeah, not the amount of production that is planned for an operation or for, for a production site, then it's stop to have fun. Yes. Um, but hopefully, and I know you well, you have solutions for this. Yeah, no worry, Thomas, for okay. sure. Perfect. <laughs> From ePlan perspective, I would say we have uh, multiple different solutions, and I would like to mention some of them here. But I would like to start to address the importance of standardization. So um, when you think from the operator perspective, this is the first step you need to think about because, of course, this is a journey which is a kind of a step-by-step -step approach, and this is also how ePlan works when it comes to standardization. And very clearly, you normally as an operator have multiple different subcontractors uh, with different systems in place and different, let's say, experience and different way of doing their documentations for their machinery. So, uh, and of course, utilizing different technology from different manufacturers out there. 
And from an ePlan perspective, we help operators to, to realize standardization. And, and this is normally something that is kind of, you know, step by step as a part of the approach. And this is, as you can see also here on the picture, we normally go in, in three different levels to help the operator to realize this. So from a very basic uh, level to understand the right formats that needs to be there, the, the right uh, way of utilizing uh, the, the systems. On the other side, you can go deeper to, to share more um, logical data in sense of what plot frame reports, what requirements do they have in sense of documentation to, to really predefine parts uh, on specific manufacturing levels. And I want to promote a, a different spotlight event, which is focusing on standardization, where we talk more about this in, in detail later on. So from the, let's say, solutions point of view, I would like to also talk about one specific solutions today. And this is the ePlan eView. Mm -hmm. And this is something that really is a solution that is utilizing the logical data in our environment. Um, and of course, this helps to utilize the, the power of digitalization also going into the service and maintenance field. So for this, I would also like to go a bit live just to have a quick view on the, the solution. So this is a part of our cloud offering and one of our cloud apps that is available um, on, on ePlan.com. E and of course, you can use uh, any iPad or anything to utilize these, um, these applications. You see one of the apps here, this is eView free that you can utilize. And of course, the projects are uploaded through, for example, eManage. And based on this, you are able to view the projects directly. So we will open one here specifically. Uh, and here we go dire directly into the page uh, navigations on the left side, where you also see the possibility to view the project in 3D. You can see also the devices that is there. If you also have handled redlining, for example, so let's say that the field engineer identify that he needs to replace a part, then of course he can directly do the redlining to inform this to the engineer. So you can ensure that you have up-to-date documentation directly in a digital way and not manually mark this in the paper, bring it back in a, to, to the engineer that then have to do that. So that is, of course, one of the big benefit with eView that you directly in the software can work also here. And as I said, not only the 2D graphics, but of course, you can also uh, have a look on the actual cabinet. And just to zoom in here a little bit, you can also see the actual components. You see the actual wiring. And you can go very detailed if you need for the service and maintenance as well. So this is one example, and, and uh, just to have a look uh, real quick on, on eView, and, and this is really helps in a, to, to take the advantage of the technologies that is out there today, instead of working with a non-up-to-date paper copy, so to speak. And I would like to take the opportunity to also um, promote a new release we have this year, which is an extension of the eView called eView AR. So this also gives us the opportunity to really take the advantage also of additional technology. So for example, when you look at a cabinet, instead of opening you know, the, the cabinet that is now currently in power, so to speak, mm -hmm. and this means that I can directly overlay the, the um, eView AR application to see what is inside the cabinet without even opening the door. And I have prepared a small video that I would like to share with you. And we go here. So we see here on the video that directly placing the iPad over the panel in the production, I can then see the inside of the component in the panel, the components and the wiring. And I can also click on the component that is maybe what is identified for one of the functions that is not working. I can click on the component. I can then publish also the schematic. So I can see exactly how it's connected in, inside the cabinet, but also outside the cabinet, how it's connected to, for example, an, uh, a drive in somewhere else, or it's uh, also maybe a motor or something like that. So this gives us an opportunity to also take the advantage of the eView AR to identify the components inside the cabinet. I can click on the wires to see how they are routed. I can see 
what part number is behind those components if I need also from a replacement point of view understand the technical specification behind this part and this is really a nice environment to work with as a service field engineer I would say. Great, so when we talked about the challenges when we started with this session so I see here some light at the end of the tunnel so solutions are there uh, yeah, to overcome these situations, missing documentation, not up to date. And what I just want to really point out is that we saw just in the video that easy access to that documentation. It's just scanning the QR code. Of course, there is some access management behind, so not everybody is allowed to access the documentation, but of course there is a, there's a login procedure and there is assessment control or user management. Um, but just think about the situation, there's a service technician that is not so familiar with the plant. He can go there, access the, uh, the documentation and directly knows, okay, what is going on, how are the components wired, so everything is there. And also the gap is closed, huh? so that redlining can be shoot or can be given back to the, to the engineers, so then really to keep it up to date. So that was already a very holistic approach. And Maybe Anders, you can also give some insights. There is our sister company, Rital. They also offer a solution. The name is ePocket. Maybe you can also have a short look at this. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. And also here I have prepared a, a short video okay. to explain a bit. Yeah. So when we look at uh, the Rital ePocket, this also goes directly with uh, the components that they are providing in the market. So if you have a cabinet, you will already find inside the QR code, mm -hmm. which you as a a service engineer can scan and based on this you have the ability to find the right documentation for that cabinet and as you see on the video not like I mentioned earlier very commonly this is one of the, the problems they try to solve with ePocket is to have uh, the digital um, digital documentation instead of you know non up-to-date paper copies in in their panels so of course they are solving multiple uh, uh, problems for this field service engineer and going from an analog to a digital environment so to speak. Yeah. You find also here more information through the QR code uh, if you want to know more. Cool. So that uh, for me looks quite, um, yeah, the, the solutions are quite close but I think there's a, a main difference between ePlan eView and ePocket. Maybe you can just spend some words on this. When you look from, I would say the, the main difference is that ePocket is focusing on storage the documentation, mm -hmm. which is up to date for the field service engineer in the plant. And on, of course, this is the same what eView is doing from ePlan. However, we also focus on more the collaboration between the field service engineer and the engineering department who is also doing the update. So as I mentioned before and showed briefly uh, or talked about briefly was also the redlining. Uh, so if you are doing changes, you are in a digital way also taking advantage to make this communication in a uh, digital way directly back to the engineering uh, department as well, who can then do the, the changes accordingly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I think that, or just um, as a statement that, uh, for example, eView also can be already used in earlier stages. So when you have, for example, to check a documentation, or maybe in, um, in, 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 in um, assembling the machine or in the startup phase and then think ePocket is more in the operation phase, right? That is correct, yes. Okay, yeah. perfect. So that was, I think, very impressive because we, we just started and, and you did the, the reference to this, did, uh, to this standardization topic. So that is really the basis, yeah, to have a good documentation with all the information and have it, of course, in a digital way because we saw the disaster with paper. Um, and then um, we, we pointed out how important it is to have this documentation available on the shop floor and really maybe close the gap between engineering and the service people. We know that maybe it's not only a gap, but maybe there's sometimes a wall. Yeah. So uh, maybe we, we, we made it possible that both parties think a little bit how they can work closer together and ePlan offers the solution to do so. Nevertheless, it's not only a software topic. You need the data behind, you need the quality of the documentation. And hopefully we made this clear so that um, yeah, this topic of service maintenance is really taken into consideration when you think about the optimization 
of your overall engineering process, just to add it to, these, uh, to this engineering process and not to forget about the phase when the machine is running. So I would thank you very much, Anders, for your insights. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. It was great, really a pleasure. And, uh, but before we finally close, um, we want to just really point out that there are more spotlights and you have your favorite ones, Anders? Maybe yeah, you can of course. introduce them? Absolutely. And for me, this is always the standardization because mm -hmm. this is the really foundation to get optimized and, and structured in engineering and also ensures proper collaboration between different stakeholders. So this is something that I would like definitely to promote. And of course, always the new 2025 version that is released this year. Okay, then it's just from my side to add uh, pre-planning. So basic engineering will really jump to the, to the beginning of the engineering process because there we show how important it is to start really from scratch or the initial steps in an in a, in a engineering process already on a digital, in a digital way. And then of course forward this data through detail engineering and then as we saw today to also service and maintenance. And another topic in a spotlight that is called Electric P8 and Automation. We show how ePlan Electric P8 offers possibilities to automate a design process for schematics or let's call it for an automation documentation including fluid and also panel layout. Maybe to get rid of manual tasks, to become faster but not lose quality in the documentation. Maybe even go deeper regarding the data and more uh, follow this principle of having really a complete digital description of the automation system. So be there and uh, hopefully see you soon in the next spotlights. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.